Welcome to Medicare for All Explained. This podcast will enlighten our listeners and dispel the distortions that surround Medicare for All. Medicare for All Explained is produced in collaboration with Physicians for a National Health Program and is hosted and produced by Joe Sparks. I'm your host, Joe Sparks. This is episode 57, What You Need to Know About Medicare, Medigap, Medicare Disadvantage, and How Medicare for All Benefits Seniors, Part 1. My guest, Diane Archer, is founder and president of Just Care USA, an independent digital media hub that focuses on health and financial issues facing boomers and their parents. Ms. Archer serves on the Brown University School of Public Health Advisory Board and is the past chair of the Board of Consumer Reports. She began her career in health advocacy in 1989 as founder and president of the Medicare Rights Center, a national consumer service organization dedicated to ensuring that older and disabled Americans get the health care they need. Ms. Archer received her JD degree from Harvard Law School. My interview with Ms. Archer covers two episodes, 57 and 58. This episode discusses the problem with Medicare, Medigap, and supplemental plans, and how Medicare Advantage puts you at a disadvantage. Part 2 discusses direct contracting, changes to improve Medicare, and how seniors would benefit from Medicare for all. It will be available on June 15th. And now, what you need to know about Medicare, Medigap, Medicare Disadvantage, and how Medicare for all benefits seniors, Part 1. Diane Archer, welcome to Medicare for All Explained. Now, we're going to be discussing Medicare supplemental or Medigap plans and Medicare Advantage. But before we get into that, I'd like to start with just a basic question, and that is, what is Medicare or what is now called traditional Medicare? All right, here we go. So there are two types of Medicare people can choose. The traditional Medicare option is one that is administered directly by the federal government, in which you have the choice of going to almost any doctor in the country, almost any hospital in the country, and having your care covered. It is publicly accountable. It is transparent, so the government can actually see what the doctors are doing in terms of providing you with treatment. And it allows the public to understand more deeply where the system is working, our healthcare system, and where it is not working as well. So it is a public system that serves. Uh, Right now, about 36 million people with Medicare. It's the preferred Medicare option because it gives people the choice they want, which is the ability to see doctors and hospitals anywhere in the country. The one issue with traditional Medicare that leads some people to go for the private Medicare option, which you alluded to, Medicare Advantage, is that it doesn't have an out-of-pocket cap. And that means that if you need costly health care services, your out-of-pocket costs could be extraordinarily high. To get traditional Medicare and have protection from financial risk, you need either retiree coverage from a former employer, Medicaid, or you need to buy in the state marketplace insurance that's often called Medigap, which fills those gaps in traditional Medicare coverage and leaves you with almost no out-of-pocket costs when you need to get care. Okay, my experience is people often get Medicare and Medicaid confused. 
So could you just briefly state what age group Medicare covers and what Medicaid covers? Yes. Medicare is for people 65 and older and people with long-term disabilities, people who are on Social Security Disability Insurance, SSDI, for uh, 24 months are also eligible for Medicare. So 65 plus and people with disabilities. Medicaid with an aid at the end is a program for people with low income. Uh, In most states, all but 12 states now, it's for people with incomes up to, I believe, 135% of the federal poverty level. That got changed during the Obama administration, got expanded to cover more people. In 12 states, though, it's still um, for people at the poverty level or at uh, even a lower state poverty level. So as you mentioned, the purpose of the Medicaid, I'm sorry, the purpose of the Medigap plans are Medicare advantages to allow people to control their out-of-pocket costs. Um. Let me just interrupt for a second, actually. Sure. There's a big difference between the Medigap plans and Medicare Advantage. Very big difference. So I want to make sure everybody understands. Before we do that, I think we should probably go over the different parts of traditional Medicare Parts A and B and mention the premiums for that. Okay. I'm not going to get into the specific premium dollars, but let me just say that everybody who has paid into Social Security for 10 years or 40 quarters is eligible for Medicare Part A uh, because they have been contributing towards it through payroll contributions um, during that time while they were working. Um, Medicare Part B is paid for in part through the general treasury and um, in part through premiums, monthly premiums that are generally deducted from people's social security checks. So you don't actually see the payment being made. And the amount of the premium differs depending upon people's income. But for the vast majority of people, I believe it's around $135 a month. And Medicare Part B covers doctor services, medical services, durable medical equipment, home health care. Medicare Part A covers hospital services, skilled nursing facility services, and rehab services, other inpatient services. Okay, so you were going to mention the difference between Medicare Advantage and Medigap plans. Yeah, there's a world of difference between the two. So Medigap, as I explained, is simply private insurance that fills gaps in traditional Medicare. So if you have traditional Medicare and Medicare is covering 80% of a doctor service, which is what it typically does, then the Medigap will generally pick up that difference. Medicare Advantage is something entirely different. It is also private insurance. Uh, It's subsidized, um, though heavily paid for, by the federal government. And it is administered by private corporate health insurers, almost always by for-profit insurers, with a few exceptions, uh, United Healthcare, Humana, Aetna, Anthem, Blue Cross, uh, all have Medicare Advantage plans. And they are therefore paid by the federal government to uh, deliver you Medicare benefits. People opt for Medicare Advantage because it has an out-of-pocket cap, and so they do not need to buy Medicare supplemental insurance to fill gaps in its coverage. That said, it's not at all evident that people in Medicare Advantage can afford their care. They do have high deductibles and co-pays in many instances that they need to pay in order to secure care. And because there is no supplemental coverage to fill gaps, if they can't afford 
those copays and deductibles, they often go without care. Moreover, the out-of-pocket cap can be as high as $7,550 in 2021, which is an extraordinary amount of money for most people. And so your out-of-pocket costs in Medicare Advantage can be significantly higher than in traditional Medicare if you need a lot of health care services. People who most enjoy Medicare Advantage are the people who either are not using a lot of health care services or who are willing to take a major risk um, and on the theory that they're not going to need significant health care services. But if they do, their out-of-pocket costs can be significant, not only because there are co-pays and deductibles for their in-network care, but because depending upon the Medicare Advantage plan they choose, uh, they may need to go out of network to get the care they need, and then their out-of-pocket costs can be even greater. So, as I understand it, for supplemental plans, your out-of-pocket costs are very limited and tend to be very low. Is that correct for the Medigap or supplemental plans? If you have traditional Medicare, the public Medicare option, and you also have a Medigap plan, you really don't have to think before going to the doctor. Your care is going to be covered in almost entirely, if not entirely, in almost every instance. Well, I think we should specify either you have traditional Medicare or you have a Medicare Advantage plan, but you can't have both, correct? You can't have both. So let me actually be a little clearer. I explain that you have Medicare Part A automatically if you've paid into Social Security for 10 years, and you have Medicare Part B. Uh, you pay a premium for that monthly. That's usually deducted from your Social Security check. Whether you're in traditional Medicare, the public Medicare plan, or you're in a private Medicare plan through Medicare Advantage, you always must have Part A and Part B in order to have your hospital inpatient care covered and your physician services covered. Um, if you opt for Medicare Advantage, the private plan, that is called Medicare Part C. It gets very crazy in terms of all the names and letters and alphabet soup, but you don't really have to pay attention to it. You do need Medicare Part A and B, no matter which Medicare option you choose. And then you also need, in many instances, prescription drug coverage, which is Medicare Part D. And if you're in traditional Medicare, you sign up separately for Medicare Part D. As a general rule, if you are in a Medicare Advantage plan, your Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage is folded into that Medicare Advantage plan's coverage. Okay. So for a supplemental plan, you'll have to pay the, um, is it the Medicare Part B, Part A premiums? If you're buying a Medigap, yeah. you're always buying it to fill gaps in Part A and Part B. Okay, but you still have to pay, your supplemental plan is over and above the premiums that you're paying for traditional Medicare. Yes, they're in addition to the premiums you pay for um, for Part B and for Part D of Medicare, yes. And if you buy Medicare Advantage, do you have a premium? In most cases, you do not have a premium on top of your Part B premium. Okay, so you buy a Medicare Advantage plan. Often you have a small premium or no premium but you don't have to pay the premium for traditional Medicare. Is that a correct statement? Well, if you have Medicare Advantage, you have a Part B premium just like you have Part B premium in traditional Medicare. Okay. So you always have to pay your Medicare premium, correct? Your Medicare Part B premium, yes. And then the supplemental plans and the Medicare Advantage plans, 
you pay whatever premiums they require over and above your Medicare Part B premium. Yeah, and I should add, if your income is low, uh, the government does offer extra help, and so some people don't have to pay that premium. Now, one difference between Medigap and Medicare Advantage, since Medigap is basically a supplement to traditional Medicare, you can go to any doctor on Medicare anywhere in the country or use any hospital that accepts Medicare, correct? Yes, and virtually every hospital accepts Medicare, and almost every doctor accepts Medicare. And the other thing is, though, if you go to Medicare Advantage, you have a restricted network, so you're only so to go in network, you have to go to the doctors or hospitals that are on that plan. Actually, that's a really important point, Joe, which we hadn't gotten into. But yes, the fundamental or one fundamental difference between Medicare Advantage and traditional Medicare is that in Medicare Advantage, you have coverage for a very restricted group of doctors and hospitals, generally those in your community. Um, You can uh, elect what's called a Medicare Advantage PPO plan that will cover um, providers outside of your community, but you will have significant out-of-pocket costs, generally 40% of the cost of your care. You will have to pay out-of-pocket. So overall, you may have lower premiums with Medicare Advantage plans, but if you get sick, you could have much higher out-of-pocket expenses with Medicare Advantage, correct? Yeah, I might put it a little bit differently, but that's basically correct. With Medicare Advantage, your upfront costs tend to be minimal. There are some plans that do charge a premium, and then you usually have lower out-of-pocket costs that go with that. But if you're in a zero premium plan, which most of them are, um, then your out-of-pocket costs um, will be very little, if anything, unless you get sick, and then they could be substantial. With traditional Medicare, you really need to pay upfront for supplemental coverage to fill gaps in Medicare. Um, and that you need, whether or not you're getting services, you need to have that coverage at the ready. So you have that upfront cost, which can easily be um between a thousand and twenty five hundred dollars a year. And as you mentioned previously, if you get sick, you can end up paying a lot more with Medicare Advantage. And based on what we discussed, I think I know the answer, but given that you have a restricted network and perhaps higher out of pocket costs if you get sick, why do people choose Medicare Advantage? So as you said, that's exactly right. If you need costly healthcare services, if you develop a complex condition, the odds are you're gonna spend a lot more financially in Medicare Advantage than you ever would in traditional Medicare. And in Medicare Advantage, the insurers tend to have a series of rules that you need to follow in order to get your care. Um, Often you need prior authorization before you can get a procedure. And often it can be a headache to get that prior authorization. Often the Medicare Advantage plans have been found to engage in inappropriate delays and denials of care. And so you have to deal with that as well. So your question is very um, on point. Why would people choose Medicare Advantage over traditional Medicare? I think there are two answers to that question, or maybe three. One answer is that they don't have the upfront costs. They can save a couple of thousand bucks if they don't need healthcare services, um, if they join a Medicare Advantage plan. And that's a lot of money. And so people would prefer to save that money if they can. And that's completely understandable. Traditional Medicare desperately needs an out-of-pocket cap. So people don't have to be forced into a Medicare Advantage option in order to protect themselves financially. But as you say, if they get really sick, as about 20% of the Medicare population um, does every year, uh, then 
it's going to cost them a lot more in Medicare Advantage. But another reason they choose Medicare Advantage is they're often lured into those plans uh, by really smart marketing and a lot of bells and whistles on the part of the Medicare Advantage plans. So, for example, these plans often say they offer a dental benefit or a hearing benefit, which people with Medicare desperately need, and traditional Medicare doesn't cover those benefits. So people sign up for Medicare Advantage thinking that they're going to get something more in Medicare Advantage than they would in traditional Medicare. Um, and the reality is that at best, it's the littlest bit more in most cases, um, and often it's less. So let me explain that. So, for example, with the hearing and dental benefit, most Medicare Advantage plans you know, will put a couple of dollars towards the cost of hearing and dental care. But a couple of dollars doesn't really do the trick for a lot of people. If they have a $900 dental procedure and they're going to get a $50 or $30 discount from their Medicare Advantage plan, that's not going to help them get the dental care they need. In fact, the data show that people with dental coverage from Medicare Advantage plans have about the same access to care as people without coverage in traditional Medicare. So again, it's more allure, these additional benefits, than a reality. The other reality is, while Medicare Advantage plans are required to cover all the benefits that traditional Medicare covers, Medicare Advantage plans decide what that means. And often they take a very narrow view of what that means. So for example, if you need a hip replacement and then you need physical therapy afterwards, you might find your Medicare Advantage plan only pays for a very small number of physical therapy visits. But if you're in traditional Medicare, you're going to get all the physical therapy you want. Or if, for example, you need an MRI, you might find that your Medicare Advantage plan says, well, before we pay for that, we're going to make you have an x-ray, even though the doctor says the x-ray isn't going to show him or her uh, what is needed to be known. So you'll have to go through a series of other um, medical services with copays before you get the MRI that you really need. Uh, so, and then there's also the issue of uh, restricted access to often the best doctors, hospitals, home health agencies, and skilled nursing facilities. There's some data to suggest that if you're in a Medicare Advantage plan, you're not going to get assigned to the best uh, specialists or the best uh, specialty hospitals. You may not get be able to go to Sloan Kettering if you want to, if you have cancer or MD Anderson. So because there are restricted networks, you're stuck with the providers in those networks if you want to keep your costs down. And that can keep you from getting access to the healthcare services that you really need. And then you couple that with the fact that doctors and hospitals are always coming and going in Medicare Advantage plans. There isn't that guarantee of continuity of care. Um, they may be covered one year and not covered the next or one month and not the next. And then you're moving from one doctor to another or one hospital to another. So there are a lot of, a lot of hurdles that you need to be able to surmount if you're in a Medicare Advantage plan. And here I want to say they're not all the same. They're all different. And um, there's no question that some people are quite satisfied with their Medicare Advantage plans, often because they're healthy, but even some people with serious conditions can be very happy. The problem is that we don't know which plans are delivering the services people need at a price they can afford, which plans are the high value plans, and which are the plans with the highest mortality rates. And that's a big problem. So, not too long ago, in the last year, um, there was a very a serious uh, analysis done in Medicare Advantage plans. It was published in um, the National Bureau for Economic Research. And uh, Jason Abela from Yale and his co-researchers found that um, some Medicare Advantage plans have very high mortality rates. And literally choosing those plans could kill you. Because if you get sick, you won't have access to the care that you need. 
So right now, people are choosing plans literally blindly. Uh, the star rating system that Medicare has in place to help people evaluate plans is a farce. It doesn't capture a lot of the quality information that you would need to know to feel confident about the plan you're choosing. And that's a big problem that has yet to be corrected. And then there's the issue of quality in these plans, plan by plan and overall. Um, the data isn't even available uh, to the government, to the government agency charged with overseeing quality to allow them to make a, a definitive determination as to quality of care. Um, in Medicare Advantage writ large, or certainly much less um, in individual plans. And so all of those are serious issues that people choosing Medicare Advantage plans uh, run into. I think there's another issue that often gets overlooked. So when you first join Medicare and decide that you want a Medigap plan, you have a community rating. But if you're in Medicare Advantage, for I think it's more than a year, and decide that you want to leave, then the Medigap plans can do individual underwriting, which means that you could have either much higher costs for the same supplemental plan or that they don't have to insure you. Is that correct? Almost correct, Jeff. So what is correct is that when you first sign up for Medicare at 65, you have the right to buy a Medigap plan. That plan is, that right is guaranteed to you, I believe it's for eight months um, from the time that you sign up for Medicare Part B. If you don't sign up for um, a Medigap plan at that time, except in four states in the country, um, you cannot be guaranteed the right to buy a Medigap plan which means that if you sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan, a private Medicare plan, and then you decide you're not happy because you're spending too much out of pocket or because you can't see the doctors you want to see or the hospitals you want to see, or you can't travel and, and be with a family member and be assured coverage wherever you happen to be in the country, and you want to switch now to traditional Medicare, you might not be able to buy a Medigap plan because the plan has the right to turn you away or to charge you an exorbitant amount of money for your coverage. Um, the piece that I want to pick on that I don't think was completely clear is that the way that premiums are charged for supplemental coverage, for Medigap coverage and traditional Medicare differs. In some cases, you can buy what's called a community rated plan, which is a plan that charges the same amount for everybody in the community. Some cases, you can buy what's called an age rated plan that's based on your age. And then you can also buy an issue age rated plan that's based on the age you are when you first buy the policy. And the only reason I'm saying this is because Sometimes the lowest price plan at 65 is the age rated plan, but over time that can get quite expensive. So sometimes the community rated plan, which doesn't change based on your age, which could be a little bit higher when you first buy the policy, may be the better policy to buy. Well, it seems that we've introduced a lot of unnecessary complications. <laughs> <laughs> Whether they're necessary or unnecessary, they're important for people to understand. They are complicated. So, I'm finding all these options somewhat confusing. Where could people go to get help about what Medicare options are best for them? Really important question, Joe. So, uh, there are two different ways people can go. You can call in your state for free your state health insurance assistance program. Sometimes it's called a SHIP for state health insurance program. And um, they have people on staff who are independent, unbiased, who will talk you through your different Medicare options. Uh, they won't tell you what to do. 
um, but they will tell you the risks and benefits of different options. You can also go to my website at justcareusa.org. That's justcareusa.org. And there, what I've tried to do also is to lay out for people in a series of individual uh, posts the different um, options that they have, uh, the choice between traditional Medicare and Medicare Advantage and how to make that decision, the choice if you go with Medicare Advantage, how to choose among the Medicare Advantage plans that are available to you. Um, what to do about supplemental insurance if you are choosing traditional Medicare, how Medicaid works with Medicare. Each person will have a different series of questions and um, between JustCareUSA.org and um, the state health insurance assistance programs, you should be able uh, to get independent, unbiased advice. Uh, The one thing I would caution people about are relying on insurance agents for this information. Insurance agents are usually paid a fee by insurance companies uh, to put you in their insurance plan. And what many insurance agents do is they steer you towards the plan that gives them the biggest fee. And so do not assume that your insurance agent is unbiased. Uh, Call your state health insurance assistance program. Talk to people in your community. Talk to your family, your friends. Talk to your doctor. Ask your doctor about whether the doctor believes uh, you should be in a Medicare Advantage plan and which Medicare Advantage plan the doctor is associated with. Or if the doctor believes you should be in traditional Medicare, you know, talk to the doctor about that and why. Those are all good ways to make as as informed a choice as you possibly can. Unfortunately, if you're going with the Medicare Advantage uh, private Medicare plan, you are always taking risks because those plans can change on a dime. So even if they're working well today, tomorrow, they can work completely differently. Diane, thank you for explaining the issues with Medicare, Medigap, and the disadvantages of Medicare Advantage. Part 2 will be available on June 15. You have been listening to Medicare for All Explained. Remember to tell your family, friends, and colleagues about this podcast information about Medicare for All Explained can be found at our website, medicareforallexplained.org. The music for this show is Super Bubbly by Jesse Spillane. The logo was created by Lily Sparks. Thank you for listening.